Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Hello again, Celebrating, Celebrating Act, Act 2 is the user manual for the second see, half of your my life. My fabulous partner, Art Kirsch, and I are with the wonderful John Mariani, food and uh, travel writer and the publisher of the Virtual Gourmet, a free newsletter. How do you get it, John? Good to see you. <laughs> How do you how do you get the virtual gourmet? Good, good. How do you get? <laughs> I'll tell them. Just go to johnmariani.com, sign yourself up free. You got it. Okay. There you go. Okay, that's what we were waiting for. Okay. Thanks. Shameless plug. Boy, did we butcher that one? Uh, <laughs> we'll be smooth at the next time. Uh, John, I have a question for you. We spent a lot of time uh, either uh, 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 in the New York area, uh, at least in the last year or two, because of uh, the pandemic, we've sort of been uh, talking about local restaurants and handling that stuff. And obviously, Europe um, uh, 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 is a, a great set of haunting grounds for you. But uh, in the past, I've been to um, uh, uh, Australia and, and Asia quite a bit in some past lives. And uh, one thing I've always uh, appreciated was the uniformity of Kobe beef, which is primarily a Japanese, uh, uh, of Japanese derivation. Can you give us some background on, uh, on Kobe beef? Is it Japanese? Is it, what's, what's it all about, Alfie? Don't get me started. I'll try to make this brief. Actually, I can make it very brief. Kobe beef comes from what they call the prefectures around the city of Kobe. That's the only Kobe beef in the world. Nobody else produces Kobe beef. Having said that, why is it such a problem that people have with nomenclature? And why is it that now every second-rate steakhouse anywhere, or even Italian restaurant, are all serving Kobe beef? How is this possible? Well, Here's the dirty linen. Um, Kobe beef, well, as you know, Art, uh, the Japanese did not eat a lot of beef until well after World War II because they didn't raise much in the way of uh, beef cattle on those islands. They don't raise much of anything on those islands. Um, <clears throat> but they fell in love with uh, American beef first. And in and around Kobe, they started making this ultra, ultra, ultra rich which is due to the inter-fat marbling uh, of the muscle tissue that creates a product which is the nearest thing to just eating a bar of butter. And for me, it's too much, frankly. I mean, two bites and I'm done. It, because of the rarity of it, it is extremely expensive. Because of the rarity of it, 99% of it is kept either in Japan or shipped to Singapore to the casinos there where they have a market for it. Almost none of it comes to the United States with the exception of a few thousand pounds per year. <clears throat> so if you see Kobe on a menu, it has to come from Kobe. If you see Wagyu or if you see Kobe style or American Wagyu, well, that takes a little bit of uh, explanation. Wagyu is the Japanese word for beef, beef cattle. That's all it means, okay? There's no such place as Wagyu Japan. So anybody can raise a facsimile of Kobe beef and call it Wagyu, although they kind of crack down on what you could say. It, has to, it does have to come from certain species, breeds of beef, and it could approximate, co approximate Kobe beef, but it ain't Kobe, okay? So it's just Wagyu. Now, that name, therefore, since all it means is beef, has been appropriated in, by Australia, the United States, and a couple of other countries where they say we are raising Kobe-style Wagyu beef. And what they mean by that is that it's done in the style. It's a fattier, richer kind of beef. Is it the same species? 99% of the time, no. The I forget how to pronounce it, Akayushi or something, breed that is used in Kobe um, is not, <laughs> you don't put them on airplanes and ship them out or through sperm tubes or anything. There are only a couple of hundred, uh, a couple of hundred cattle that are true 
Kaushi uh, uh, cattle in the whole United States. So uh, they're playing, restaurateurs and chefs are playing very fast with that term. And you have to, if you're interested, because you're going to be paying such a high price for it. I mean, you, we're talking about $200 for a steak, and that's what Kobe should cost because there's so little of it. Now, is there, therefore, I said there's so little of it here. Can you get the real McCoy in the United States? Yes. And there are certain prefectures, specifically in Kobe A5, um, that is known for their Kobe beef. And there is an organization, an official association of Kobe producers, which give the right to either distribute or to sell in a restaurant Kobe beef around the world or in the United States. And in the United States, there's less than a dozen. I think there's only half a dozen purveyors. And I spoke and had an extensive interview in uh, my virtual gourmet, um, which you look in the archive and find by a guy who brings it in. And he says, we can't always get it. I mean, so, so if you see Kobe menu, uh, Kobe on a menu 365 days a, at a restaurant, um, it's not necessarily our Kobe beef because we're lucky if we can get as much as we can. Um, so there are very, very few shipping the stuff at all. But is it available? Mm, maybe. You got to be sure. However, if you want to be sure, ask to see the Golden Award. The official association of Kobe producers gives out this kind of ugly, amorphous, golden thing, um, this kind of statue-like thing, to those institute, those, institute, those uh, organizations that either import or that sell it in rest of restaurants. I've only seen that in one restaurant in New York about three or four years ago. Never saw one since then. Um, the guy I interviewed, um, he certainly has it. He, he probably holds it up and so forth. So that's the way to make absolutely sure. Could you show me your uh, official Kobe gold uh, statue, sir? And if they can't produce it, they're faking it. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like um, not a scam, but it does sound like a, um, a marketing ploy. Like champagne. Is, um, like the champagne. Know, rampant throughout the restaurant industry. Yeah, well, champagne with a capital C now has to mean champagne from the uh, specific section of uh, France. Even in, in France, they don't call anything champagne that is not from that region around Reims and uh, Epernay. Uh, for many, many years, for decades, uh, you, know, you could go and have a champagne, Western New York champagne or California champagne, yeah. but now it's called sparkling wine. But it, you're, you're right that it's the same thing with uh, Kobe with a capital K, because that's the name of the city. Um, mm. <clears throat> people have been bandying that about, and I think it is a scam. It's a very big scam for the which they're paying a lot of money. Again, yeah. does that mean that the non-Kobe beef is um, falls far short of the real Kobe? Now, there's degrees. You know, I've had some pretty impressive non-Kobe so-called Wagyu beef, which is very fatty and very marbleized. And I've had some that is not nearly as, as, as good as USDA Prime, which is my personal favorite. I think that USDA Prime, corn-fed, corn-finished, um, even though the rating is the grading for USDA Prime has gone way down, um, that's still my preferred uh, slice of steak. Mm. And one last, one last thing, if we could, um, because I know that speaking of beef, we butchered it early on. Uh, where can people find this archive um, uh, to read about um, uh, Kobe beef? You can go to us again, John at John Mar not Well, you're not. Yeah, you can go to my email, John at John Mariani dot com. If you have a question, just go to www.johnmariani.com, <clears throat> or you can put in the virtual gourmet. And in my site, there is the whole archive for the last 26 years. And the Kobe story that we're talking about only appeared about two or three weeks ago. So it's fresh meat. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm a meat lover um, and I love beef, I have to tell you. So this has been a, a very eye-opening uh, conversation for me. Thanks. Hope I saved you some money in the future. You bet. Thank you, John. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, 
and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.